Up next is Jacqueline in San Antonio. Hey, Jacqueline, how are you? Hi, guys. I'm well. Thank you. Better than we deserve. Good. How can we help? You didn't even ask, but I answered anyway. What's up? Hey, you know, I already knew the answer. <laughs> I'm on autopilot, Jacqueline. How can we help? <laughs> uh, I have a beautiful, responsible 19-year-old daughter who lives with us um, and is about to make me a grandmother. <clears throat> I know it's funny. I said responsible first, right? <clears throat> <laughs> Except for that um, one time, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. My my quest well, financially responsible, hardworking, excellent work ethic and, and, and morally sound. Um my question is how much should I be helping her throughout this pregnancy and throughout the first month? Um, it was obviously unplanned, um, and she's had a hard time with processing the, the whole thing and she is now unable to work. So I'm I'm just kind of looking to you. Um, it was sort of a light came on as I was driving and listening to you, and I thought, I respect Dave's answers, so let's run it by him. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Um, sometimes when I'm facing something like that that is um, a little bit ethically or morally or I don't even know, those, those aren't the right words, uh, relationally overwhelming, um, it helps me to say not what is the right answer today, but what do I do today that is the right answer for 10 years from now? Exactly. Because and, we, we have a strong foundation with our kids of teaching them financial responsibility. Yeah. You know, we go by yours for years yeah. and years. And so and what, what you've got is, is I mean, circumstance we obviously, obviously a baby is an awesome, wonderful thing, particularly grandbabies. If I'd have known how great grandbabies were going to be, I'd have been nicer to their parents. Um, so, you know, all of that part is wonderful. So this is a bad metaphor, but I would almost say, what if she had a car wreck and couldn't work? She, she, she ran a red light. It was her fault. And then she got hurt, right? That's not a really good metaphor because it's not as babies are much sweeter than that. Right. But, um, but I mean, that's kind of how I think I probably would look at it. I'm just thinking like a grandpa right now or like a dad. And, and that's where my brain is stuck. This is not a 39-year-old who's done heroin for 15 years and hates me. This is a 19-year-old right. that messed up, made a mistake that otherwise has led a, led a pretty good life, is what you're describing to me. That's correct, yeah. When our kids graduate yeah. high school. Thank uh, God God college, didn't throw all of us them. out in the ditch the first time we made a mistake. So right. I got lots of right. grace and mercy in this situation if it's me. I'm just going to take care of her like she's 17. Yeah. And then, but, but all with the idea that we're going to lead towards uh, a sustainable answer when she's 25. So what's sustainable for right. her when she's 25? Well, obviously financial responsibility, career responsibility, mommy responsibility, living on her own and sustaining a, and developing a life whether she does that as a single mom or later on gets married to someone, Right. Do you but, mind if I add one more thing in? Okay. Um, when they graduate high school, we have them pay us rent immediately. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, their grades stay up in college. When they graduate, they get all that money back. So it's basically savings. If they don't, we keep it. Yeah. Um, she was able to, in school, pay us rent $500 a month. And she also saved $6,000 working full-time in six months. So she has $7,000 in her savings account. And really my question was, do I even let her touch that? No. Are you, are you guys are you guys okay financially? You and your husband? We are. We're okay. debt free besides our house. Yeah, this is not a financial lesson. This okay. is a, I'm loving my daughter through a very very tough time. She, she had a car wreck. You know. I'm. Uh, that's very validating. <laughs> yeah. That that's what I would do. My, and and I'm pretty hardcore yeah. on tough love, as they call it. Uh, but mm -hmm. this is not tough love. This is not a time for that. For me, for me, this is a little scared pregnant girl, and I'm going to put my arms around her. I'm going to love her. She's mine, and we're going to get her through this. But all, not with the idea that she lives in your basement until she's 39, but the idea that she's going to, because you gave her some room here to heal and to not, not heal, but to go through this process. Well, and heal. It's been traumatic, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and yes. so um, to go through the, and get back on her feet emotionally, relationally, make better choices going forward. This is not a pattern that represents her life. 
Um, and, and so let's get back on that track that, that she was on. And, and then you got a 25 year old. That's a, that's an amazing human being with, a, it's an amazing mom and, and everybody's happy and proud. Again, I'm not enabling into the distant future, but on the short term here, I just completely take care of her as if she was in yeah. ICU or something. What do you think, mm, George? Yeah, I'm, I'm with that. And I'm also wondering, you said she's unable to work. Is that just a short term thing? What does that look like? It is. She um, developed a pregnancy disease around five to six weeks um, in her pregnancy before she could even process. And mm-hmm. she became so sick that she was hospitalized. Um, the good news is that it does go away the moment she delivers. And she's managed it now. The hospitalization um, helps them to manage her sickness. And so she is medicated and she's managed at this point and able to function. But it's very unpredictable. So yeah. she's not able to get another job. Yeah. Okay. This is a 19 year old and a baby. Yeah. Take yeah. care. Of, just take care of her. Yeah. That's what I would do. Uh, and well, again, that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay. You're a good mom. You got a good heart and you're not, you know, you, you, you've raised a, I know you're tough cause you raised a kid that has work ethic. You raised a kid that's make, you're making her pay rent. You raised a kid that did this and that and this and that. And, and, you know, so you're, you're not a pushover enabler mom. I don't think. I didn't hear that. Well, I think that's where it goes into the long-term ramifications. If this is still a decade from now and we're still living like this in the basement, that's where we need to go. We need to have an exit strategy out of this, too, once she's healed up and on her feet. In my mind, this is the perpendicular opposite of uh, someone who's 31 years old and does this and is belligerent and says, if you don't help me, you'll never see your grandkid mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. I have a completely different reaction to that person than I do this 19-year-old kid. And if you're 19 and you don't like me calling you a kid, I got socks older than you, so just calm down. That's the deal. I lo- That just means I love you is all that means. It doesn't mean that I'm putting you down. But I got a little more rings around the tree. It's so a nice way A little, little more age going here. So... Uh, you know, that, that's the thing. So, it, you know, what you're looking for in relational things, period, but certainly in um, uh, uh, financial relational things is you're looking for patterns, not singular events. And patterns cause you to endorse a situation or to avoid a situation. And, and that keeps you from becoming an enabler mm. if you're wondering out there and you're a mom and a dad. Uh, so if you've got a 37 year old that lives in your basement and will not work, that's a pattern. You need to kick said, butt into the street because you're not a blessing to them. You are a curse to them. You are an enabler. You have stolen their dignity, the dignity of autonomy, the dignity of standing on your own, the dignity of hard work, the dignity of killing something and dragging it home. The only thing they know how to do is play Nintendo, and it's your fault. You should be ashamed. That's a different pattern for moms and dads. And we got that out there because we got a group of males that aren't yet men that are stuck in their mommy's basement and mommy's still doing their dadgum laundry. And if you don't like that, that's okay. Get you a show. This is mine. So that's how this works. 